Praise God. So long ago in the Garden of Eden, God created two people, Adam and Eve, and then they had children, many of them. And uh, they had a special place in the heart of God. God had a plan. Uh, he didn't just throw the earth, the solar system here, and put people on earth and without having a plan. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was slain from before the foundation of the world. So before the world was actually created, God had a plan that he would save uh, some people, their creatures that he was going to create, which is us, and uh, uh, he was going to save some of them, not all of them, and he was going to give them a free choice. If they chose him, uh, then uh, he would love them and accept them. If they rejected him, he would also reject them. And so uh, we are here on earth, and that's the purpose. Uh, God is selecting a, a people. He's gathering a group of people together. I've always taught that the reason why is that because the angels fell, uh, that God had to come up with this plan. And uh, we are going to replace those angels, and uh, they don't like us a bit. They know that uh, there is a replacement theology going on. And it's uh, God is replacing those that fell uh, with uh, those that chose that they want to serve the Lord. I honestly don't know how you could possibly be in heaven with God and decide that you don't want to be there, yeah. that you want to take over the place. If you recognize that God created you, what would make anybody be so foolish like Lucifer? to think that he could take over heaven. But he was uh, influential, and he was capable, and he was beautiful, and he was good in so many ways, but yet he had an evil heart and a heart full of murder. And he was a liar. Jesus said he was a liar, and he's the father of the lie. He was a murderer from the beginning. And so uh, even though he was in heaven, uh, he had made a choice that he wanted to take over heaven. And the Bible says, I saw him uh, fall from heaven like lightning, and he fell to the earth. And he is now, if you will, the God of this world. Many people will bow down to the God of this world. In fact, even Jesus Christ was asked to bow down to the, to the old devil, Lucifer. He said, uh, Bow down and worship me, and I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. They're all mine, and they're mine again, which is was true. And he said, if you will just bow down and worship me. And Jesus made it clear. He said, get behind me, Satan. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Amen. That is our greatest battle, uh, and our greatest weapon in the battle against Satan, is that we use the wonderful word of God yes. against him. All right, let's get into the word of God. We're going to go to uh, Isaiah chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 3. Amen. If you're here today without the Holy Ghost, today could be your day. Amen. Uh, today could be your day. I was over here praying, and uh, God uh, gave me this message here this morning. And we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 12, and verse 3. It says, therefore, with joy, everybody say joy. joy, with joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation, praise God, praise God, therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation, amen, there is so much negative in our world today. There are so many things uh, that they purposefully, I believe, do uh, to make us feel bad. I think they purposefully are provoking America uh, by doing the things that uh, we don't want them to do, uh, just simply because uh, they uh, can do it. Amen. But they're trying to steal our joy. They're trying to take our joy away from us. But uh, the uh, Word of God speaks to us. And lets us know that we need to draw out of the wells. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And God's got a lot of wells, church. Yeah. Amen. He's got wells for financial blessings. 
He got wells for uh, 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 healing. He got wells for uh, uh, bandaging up relationships. Uh, God has the bells of giving wells of giving people sound minds. Uh, there are all kinds of wells that God has that you can draw from. And whatever well you need to draw from, uh, you need to reach out and with joy, you need to reach down into the wells. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, with joy, we need to reach down yes. into those wells of salvation. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 28. And we're going to read verses 11 and 12. And you're hearing here today. Praise God. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he saith, this is the rest. Wherein you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. If you're wanting rest, amen. Jesus said, come unto me. Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. I'll give you rest. Praise God. This is the rest. What are you talking about? For with stammering lips. And another tongue will he speak to this people to whom he said, This is the rest wherein he may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Amen. I don't know about you, but I could use a little rest and a little refreshing from our great God here today. Amen. that we're going to serve the creature 
more than the Creator. Amen. It never works. It all comes to nothing and it won't work. But for those of you that want the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and those of you that want New Testament uh, plans of salvation and the help that comes only through the cross of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit that is, is indwelling people that believe that Jesus Christ, He is the Son of God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. He was letting the children of Israel know, I am the Lord your God and none else. If you look at other parts of the book of Isaiah, he said, is there any other God beside me? He said, I don't know of any. Amen. He said, I spread abroad the earth alone. I did it by myself. I didn't need any help. I just simply spoke it into existence. I spread it abroad by my word. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Holy Ghost comes through hearing the word of God. Faith will get you there. Amen. Faith in God's word will get you there. So many years ago, Isaiah prophesied. So many years ago, Job prophesied. Amen. He said, after the death of Messiah, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that God is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Everybody said, Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Jesus had resurrected from the dead. And he was spending 40 days with the, the disciples and uh, the apostles, speaking of them the things pertaining to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Praise God. Oh, what a great time it was. What a great time they had. Amen. But before he went out and he went to Mount Olivet and he ascended up to heaven, he told them to go to Jerusalem and tarry until you receive power from God. Amen. You're here today and you don't have the power. Praise God. Of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's for you here today. Amen. Yeah. God has a way of giving power to you. Yeah. You say, well, I don't feel like I have much power. Amen. You have to exercise that power. The Bible says that uh, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Amen. And uh, we are supposed to, to, to speak in tongues often. We need to do it every day. But the Bible says, but ye, brethren, building yourself up among your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God. Amen. That's how you keep yourself in the love of God. By praying in the Holy Ghost. And sometimes uh, people after they get the Holy Ghost. Or receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They think well that's it. I've got it. It's inside of me. Yes. But you have to keep getting that oil lantern. You have to keep getting your oil lantern full of oil. Amen. Oil for us to be ready for the coming of the Lord. We have to have pictures and oil in our lamps, and they need to be full to just say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. In other words, the sun had just went down on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Praise God. The day of Pentecost is when the Jewish people celebrated the giving of the law. 50 days from the time they put the blood on the post. Amen. 50 days from the time that Jesus' blood was all over the post of Calvary. 50 days to the exact day, to the exact moment of time. God made sure that the day of Pentecost, the New Testament church would start on the same exact day that he gave Moses the law. And he did that because on the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one accord. And they were all in one place. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 through 4. And suddenly, praise God, the apostles had gathered together, 120 of them, Mary the mother of Jesus, and 120, approximately 120 people gathered together. Remember, 500 people saw Jesus ascend to heaven. 500 brethren saw. But 50 days later, 
uh, many of the people, 75% of the people disobeyed Jesus Christ and they went back home and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they may have been in the area, I don't know, but most of them weren't there when in Jerusalem when it happened. There was only 120. Can you imagine 500 people seeing Jesus ascend to heaven? Angel said, you know, you, this is the same way he's going to come back. He's going to burst over the skies. And he's coming back just the same way he left. And yet, they don't understand what is happening here. Hallelujah. And they leave. 75 out of 100 left. Praise God. There was only 120. So 380 approximate people that saw Jesus ascend to heaven and he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father, which was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When that day came, uh, they got tired of waiting. Uh, they were thinking about the chores that had to be done back home. They were thinking about the fences that needed to be mended back home. They were thinking about their wife or maybe their children that maybe didn't come with them to this Passover and they needed to get back home. And then they're thinking about uh, their sheep in the field. They were thinking about a lot of things. But what they should have been thinking about in church, uh, we need to focus on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you're here today and you don't have it, that's what you need to focus on. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. And suddenly, in other words, sooner than they expected. Amen. You're expected today. You can get it today. Amen. And then there came a, a sound of a mighty rushing wind from heaven that filled the whole house where they were sitting. Amen. You're sitting here today in the house of God, and you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost absolutely right where you are sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Hallelujah. Oh, what a great day it was when the people of God uh, began to speak in other tongues. Mary, the mother of Jesus, all of the 12 apostles, including the Matthias, who had been reelected because Judas, by transgression, fell. All of those 12, Mary, the mother of Jesus, with many women and many men, were gathered together in the upper room out of obedience to Jesus Christ. And next thing you know, praise God, I feel the Spirit moving right now. Hallelujah. I don't know if you can feel what I'm feeling, but I wish you could, and I hope you are, because I'm feeling some very strong uh, vibrations from the living God. Amen. And as we preach about this great and wonderful message, there were people there from all over the world, and they heard them speaking in the language where they were born. They were speaking the wonderful works of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, they said they're a bunch of drunks. Oh, I would to God we had a bunch of drunks here this morning. Praise God. The drunk one of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He said, these are drunk. They're just a bunch of crazy people walking around here. And if you've ever been in an apostolic Pentecostal church and you see people receiving the Holy Ghost, they will. They'll stumble. Some of them even lay down on the ground and begin to worship and pray to God. Some of them will roll. Some will jump and shout. And then I remember when my brother Ray received the Holy Ghost, and me and Brother Ron Conkle, and, and my brother Ray and myself, the three of us in a circle holding hands, and jumping up and down and going around in circles. We'd jump and we'd go in circles. Right now, we had no place else to go. <laughs> there were just three of us, and we were jumping up and down. He was speaking in tongues. He was a poor, shy, backward guy. He'd get up to speak in church. He couldn't hardly say a word. But praise the God, that night he got the Holy Ghost. My older brother, Leslie Ray, when he got the Holy Ghost, he began to speak in tongues, and he began to jump, and we were just moving around in circles. We moved around in circles one way for a while, then we moved around in circles, jumped up and down the other way for a while, and we just kept praising and magnifying uh, the great God of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And then God can fill shy people with the Holy Ghost. And if some of them had came into the church at that time, they would have thought we were crazy. True. And because other people were jumping and shouting, it looked like a bunch of junk, uh, Mexican jumping bees going up and down all over the church. People shouting, people running, people praising and magnifying God. Oh, what a great time we were having in the spirit of the Lord. There's no reason why we can't have that here today, church.
go. Peter stood up with the eleven. Everybody say, with the eleven. Praise God. This just wasn't Peter. He was standing up in unity with the other eleven. And here's what he said. This is that. Amen. What you're seeing here, these people speaking in other tongues look like they're drunk. He said, this right here is that which Joel spoke about in the last days after that the Messiah just died and gave his life for us on Calvary. It was going to open up something for you and you could go to Calvary and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And all my servants and all my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. If you don't have the Holy Ghost already today, amen. It's for you. You can still get it here today. Amen. We're going to pass it to Carol Cup. And sing a song. Praise God. But uh, after these people spoke in tongues, and the Jews finally realized after he preached that they had just killed their Messiah. They killed their own Messiah. And so he began to preach to the Jews. And everybody else that was in Jerusalem. Praise God. He said, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. Oh, uh, he's not just Christ, he's also the Lord. God made him that. Yes. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. In other words, they felt bad and repented. And they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, it wasn't just to Peter they were talking to, they were talking to the rest of the apostles. He said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. For the promises unto you and to your children, and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, and with many other words did he testify and exalt, uh, exhort, saying, save yourselves. Yes. Praise God. You have an obligation today to save yourself. You say, well, I can't save myself. Well, if you turn to God uh, through Calvary, you can get saved. Amen. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Listen to this. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Praise God. Amen. This is a big movement. It was big on the day of Pentecost. It was big 10 years after Pentecost. It was even bigger 20 years after Pentecost. And, and 2,000 years after Pentecost and more, it's still moving in the city of Marmette, West Virginia. Amen. God's Spirit is still moving. God's Spirit is still wanting to fill people with the Holy Ghost. Amen. God's Spirit wants to give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost more than you want it. Amen. And once you get it, you need to exercise it every single day. Amen. Building yourself up on your most holy faith. Not just holy faith, but your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God. That's how we keep ourselves with joy. That's how we keep ourselves with happiness. That's how we uh, become the energizer bunny, so to speak, is because we have the joy of the Lord as our salvation. We have reached into the wells of salvation. And with joy, we reached into there. Amen. And we took out the things that we needed out of the wells of salvation. Amen. God has had a plan. If you think about it, there would be no day of Pentecost 
if there was no Tower of Babel. Think about that for a minute. All the language was one when Noah built the ark. Hallelujah. Right. Praise God. But after that, they tried to build the Tower of Heaven so they wouldn't be grounded out anymore. Man always had a way to solve their own problems, don't they? But God used their stupidity because he knew they would do that. So he came up with a plan. I will confuse their languages. I will change their skin colors. I will change their hair textures. I will do it all in one day. I'm going to change their languages. And they're going to all, they're building this temple together. They're all suddenly going to change. They won't understand their languages. They won't understand why they can't communicate. They'll go to the, the brick layer and they'll say, I need 50 bricks. And he won't even know what they're talking about. Amen. And it, it brought so much confusion. That's why they call it Babel. Everybody's always saying they're just babbling. Amen. They didn't know what each other was saying. And it broke up the unity. And God had said, uh, there's nothing that they will not accomplish if because they're all unified together. Church, if we can get unified together, there's nothing we can't accomplish on this earth. But we first have to recognize that uh, when we try to do it our way, uh, we will fail. Amen. But we need to go God's way. Hallelujah. There would have not been a day of Pentecost if there had not been a Tower of Babel. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Let's sing a song here as we open up our altars here today for those that need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thanks. You can get it right where you're at. Amen. You can get it right here. You can come down here on the altar and sit. You can kneel down here. You can get the Holy Ghost anywhere in this building or on your way home or on your way.